China, we are Russia. sleepwalking our way potentially into World War III. And I think it's dangerous. And as U.S. president, I will put an end to it. I will keep us out of World War III. How? We got to first end the Ukraine war on, with a peace deal that allows Ukraine to come out with its sovereignty intact. But we will freeze the current lines of control. That means Russia gets certain parts of the Donbass region. Means that NATO will never admit Ukraine to NATO. Every deal, everybody's got to get something out of it. That's what Russia gets out of it. But we get something more. Russia has to exit its military alliance with China. The Russia-China military alliance, it is the single greatest threat that we face in the United States today. But do they, they don't have an official alliance, do they? Like it's more like they're buddy-buddy though, right? They have an official. Like they don't have like a NATO, no, right? No, they, they have an official alliance. Oh, really? It's a 2001 treaty. It's called the Treaty of Good Neighborliness and So ahead, how do you how do you plan to like close that gap and beat Trump for the Republican Here's my plan. Nominee? Speak the truth. By the end of this, I, I think that my job is to make sure every person in this country knows who I am and what I stand for. That's a hard thing to do because I love settings like this because it's not through some distorted media filter. But with the modern, especially mainstream media, that's a difficult thing to do. But that's my job. But if everybody in this country knows who I am and what I stand for and they want to go for somebody else, I'm comfortable with that. I'm cool with that. That's the system working as it should. In some ways, it would be a relief. I don't relish having the job. I don't want this job out of personal glory or perks. We're spending money on this, unlike other U.S. presidents like the one we have now, making money off their political position. We're doing the opposite. I'm doing this because I think I have a I sense of duty. Has some weirder psychological stuff going on that I think could make him a more interesting person to meet. So his dad was one of the victims of the cultural revolution that Mao led, where he turned on many senior Communist Party officials by getting young people to turn on them. I think Xi Jinping himself was embarrassed with like a, he had to wear like a tin cone or something like that on his head when he was a kid. It's kind of weird, actually. Like some deep daddy issues there going on. But so Damn, I, I that's think, a heavy chirp. I think that would be interesting. And I, and I think you got to understand the people you're sitting across the table from. And so, you know, I, I think Xi Jinping's a fascinating person, but I'm, but I'm not going to be his therapist or a psychologist. I think we're just going to get to the bottom of what's right for the United States. You don't mess with our national interests. We're going to be very clear about what our red lines are. You got to have credible red lines. You got to hold tight to them. And you got to be credible about what's not in your national interest. And I think that this is how a spy we're going to stand flying home over half our country. And the reason we don't say anything about it is because we're dependent on China for our modern way of life, from the shoes on our feet to the phones in our pockets. Fuck. In the new Cold War, we're dependent on the enemy. Think about that. Even many of the military contractors, this is nuts, actually, what I'm about to tell you, but it's true. Our military contractors that are making our own military equipment, their supply chains start in China. Think about that. China is actually putting and training Mexican drug cartels and selling fentanyl to them that they're putting into other drugs. And I met to parents of two kids, sad seven, story of a 17-year-old. He died. He got Percocet on Snapchat. It was laced with fentanyl. He didn't know it had fentanyl in it. He died. On the You're spot. saying China is selling fentanyl to the Mexican drug cartels yes. that they're China making. China is sending the, the synthetic ingredients required to make fentanyl. There's four key ingredients. The thing that was So funny they actually about sent you like a what? A season to assist or something? Yeah. The funny thing is we weren't even planning. To do this what? Is... Just like warning like, yo, don't wrap yeah, loose yourself like again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's very threatening. So the funny thing is we didn't even play. It wasn't even our music at our event. This is somebody else's event that we show up at where the Iowa governor is interviewing me. They play it. But the world is weirdly broken for a reason right now we're running for a reason to fix this stuff he was, was it yeah. the, the fcc won't let me be me that was one of the things he said in one of his songs right and it's funny how things change right the guy who said i don't give an f who you think you are you're not going to stop me from standing up to the system is now the guy that bends the knee literally bends the knee to the blm movement and recites chapter and verse with the new woke orthodoxies. So I still love the original guy. It's just, it happens not to be the same person who's around now, but that's beside the point. Say, I want to apply an emissions cap to oil companies here. They'll say, get the heck out and shut the door on your way out. 
But if you tell them that I am applying an emissions cap to companies in the United States, they will roll out the red carpet. Right? You show up in China and you say, I'm going to criticize you for putting a million religious minorities in concentration camps and subject them to forced sterilization, communist indoctrination, and worse. So they're doing a million Uyghurs in Shenzhen in China right now. If you say a peep about that over there, they'll shut the door and say, get the heck out. But if you criticize the United States for systemic racism or slavery 250 years ago, they will roll out the red card. For every 100 people who died of a climate-related disaster in the year 1920, hurricane, tornado, heat wave, drought, for every 100 people who died back then of a climate-related disaster, how many people die today? Of a climate-related disaster. Wait, you're saying 100? Like like back then, 100 people were dying yeah. of climate-related disasters in a given year. Oh, okay, okay. Do you think now. that the, it, it, for, every, for every 100 people, do you think that it, that number is more or less now? The way you're phrasing it, probably less. It's less, yeah. yeah. But if you buy up the popular narrative, everyone, would, everyone and their brother would think yeah, more. that more people are dying of climate-related disasters now. Not only are fewer people dying, 98%. Fewer people are dying. So for every 100 people that died then, two. Picking up where he left off died. to take this further. But I'm 38 years old. I've got fresh legs, right? I'm not yet jaded approach. and cynical. And I think that, I just think the truth is it's bigger than me. It's bigger than Trump. America first does not belong to him. It does not belong to me. It belongs to the people. So how do we actually move this country forward? How do you forward? just get it done? I can unite this country in a way that I don't think he can. He did what he needed to do. Now it's the moment to take this to the next level, unite the country. I will ask for his help in doing it. He's a patriot, and I believe he will give it to me because he cares about this country too. I believe deeply that he does. And we respect each other. We're both outsiders. That's what it's going to take. But I need to be the president to do it. And I think having fresh legs and not yet being jaded and cynical and having eight years of taking on the arrows that these people have shot at you from front and back, it's not his fault, but it's just a fact. Not having driven 30% of this country psychiatrically ill. You could say that's their fault. So be it. But it, we are where we are. I think that's what's a much greater risk country. of nuclear war right now and countless people dying of nuclear war than we do of climate change. And I bring that up today because this morning or last night, Biden was saying climate is the single greatest risk to humanity, not nuclear war. I disagree. You got a president who's sleepwalking us into a nuclear war right now. How can they say climate change is the biggest threat to our society? Because, That's just a load of bullshit, honestly. Because they will just make anything up to exercise power, dominion, control, and punishment. And they're being played like a Chinese mandolin by the CCP, who's laughing at every step of the way, because they're not adopting any of these climate constraints. See, so, so here's how this game works. And I've, they're just you know, pushing all this bullshit on us, and then they're just doing all the shit that's going to make them powerful. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And they're laughing. There, there's a... There's a Chinese Pretty word. Pretty smart, man. I mean, the, those, these guys, these guys, those are, guys smart. are smart. These right guys now. are smart. You know, they're laughing at us. Yeah. They're literally laughing. On the seriousness of this, putting the joking to one side, I'm going to share a hard fact with you. Because more people have died of ice ages than have died from warming ever in human history. Today, as we speak right now, eight times as many people die of cold temperatures as warm ones. The right answer to all temperature-related deaths is more access to energy, including fossil fuels. Here's a fun one for you. Ice age would be so fucked. What's that? Ice age? Oh my oh God. Oh my God. It'd be, so I had, I mean, I think somebody could make, somebody wants to make a, a pretty good movie right now. It'd be like a futuristic dystopian movie where 200 years from now, we're on the cusp of a looming ice age because we weren't using carbon dioxide.